Okay, welcome to yet another legacy video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be playing a deck that I've been very, very skeptical about, or mainly just, you know, on the fence about um, people throwing around words like banworthy and broken and stuff like that. Um, I've only played against the deck like a handful of times, and uh, yeah, for sure, the, the, the potential is huge, um, but. Yeah, let's see if the consistency can hold up, because people have counterplay for it. Um, we're not just gold fishing. We are playing Legacy. We are getting discarded. We are getting countered. Um, but yeah, let's see if there's enough, you know, non-blue decks in the format, basically, to, to roll over. Um, this deck is a combo deck that spawned because of the printing of Necrodominance. Necrodominance, a three black enchantment. Says, skip your draw step. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay any amount of life if you do draw that many cards. Um, and you have to discard down to five after the fact. So we want to win on that actual end step. And we're doing that via Born Upon a Wind. Uh, two mana, you may cast this, you may cast spells this turn until they had flash draw card. So how do we get blue mana on our end step? So we play eight spirit guides. We play mana morphos. We play rituals. So we're basically looking to play um, Born Upon a Wind, then just play our cards, Besiege for a Tendrils, and win the game. We have Valakut Awakening here for fail rate. Um, it's mainly relevant post-Necro, I would say. Then you can like pitch some Spirit Guides, put 10 cards on the bottom, draw 10 fresh cards, and then you should get there. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. This deck plays a lot of acceleration, and then it plays four packs and three chancellors even to try and protect against opposing counter spells. So when I've played against this deck, it it, it hasn't been super unusual that the opponent just went Dark Ritual Necrodominance, pack my force, win. So let's see if we can take advantage of that today. This deck only plays seven lands. Uh so yeah, this is a very all-in combo deck. Um even Theorem Powder here to hopefully sculpt more playable uh, openers. Four copies of Summoner's Pact, which is basically just to get Elvish Spirit Guide or get Wild Cantor in case you already have a Spirit Guide. So you can kind of start your ritual chain. Um, sideboard, I took this list from uh, MTG play, MGO player uh, Tony Scapone, and ah, let's say uh, I'm not too sure about what to do here. So obviously we have... Mindbreak Trap against the Posting Combo Dex with Slaughter Pact against Known Entity Hate Bears. And then we have a couple of Chrome Mocks, which I used to play like 15 years ago, or maybe less, maybe 12, 12 years ago in Combo Dex when I wanted to increase my speed after sideboard. That could be it. Let's see. Uh, Chancellor, I guess, to maybe leverage being on the play against a single force. A couple of Veils to guard against Grief and Counters. More stuff for. Um, Hateful Permanence, and then the fourth Serum Powder for good measure here. Um, I don't know what to expect. I hope we'll have some explosive games today. Thanks for watching so far. All right, round one here, playing Necrodominance and Legacy, and uh, looks like we got to send this hand back with Serum Powder and also, in the process, tell our opponent what we're playing. Um, yeah, this hand is very close. Let's see. Uh no, this hand has got this hand got there. Okay, so I can summoner's pack for Wild Cantor, play it out of Spirit Guide, and then I have triple black with Pact. <laughs> oh, this is too funny. So gosh. Yeah, so basically now I'm trying to win the game um through one disruption spell. And if I'm has two disruption spells, the game's just over. So it's not it's not, it's not much magic we get to play here. And then, of course, we have the roulette of drawing 19. Let's see how many born we exiled. We exiled one, so I'm not even, I think, a favorite to win um, after drawing 19. Maybe I am because of uh, Valakut. Two spirit guides gone as well. Ah, uh, yeah. Opponents on a lot of mulliganing here, which is might not even be necessary. Um, gonna be very hard for the opponent to have double force here, so obviously we check for that every day of the week. 
Yes, I want to cast a Summoner's Pact. I want to go get Wild Cantor, play it. Pedal. Pedal. Black mana. Black mana. Black mana. Necrodominance. First card I've ever resolved this card. First time, so uh, I have to go to the end step and then I hopefully get a trigger. So since I've already packed it, it's kind of now or never. Let's pay 19 life, draw 19. And there's double spirit guide. There's man. I'm oh, I, I don't have the blue the blue card, right? Okay, so I have to do some shenanigans here. So let's see, black and uh, uh, what am I gonna do here? Black and red, I think, is all I can do. Yeah, so. One black, one red, dark red, and now I play Valakut Awakening floating one black. Uh, let's see. Outer, Potence, Land, Chancellor. I'll think about the Beseech. No, I already have a... Uh... Okay, so Beseech, Land, Act. Maybe Ritual doesn't matter. Let's see. Mm, I think I can get rid of everything. I think my opponent would already have reacted. So let's see, what am I keeping now? Should I should I keep Cabal Ritual? Maybe. I don't think so. Okay, let's try this. So what did I draw into? I drew into what I need. Okay, nice. So, Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, Mana Morphos. Blue. Born. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual, Tendrils, nice turn one. Okay, so we got their turn one here. Thanks to the interaction between Summoner's Pact and Wild Cantor. That was kind of cool. So no idea what we're up against. What does that do for our uh, situation? There's something to be said about the Chancellor not being the best on the draw. Maybe I cut that card. Mm. I mean, this is just an educated guess, but I could just run, like, double chrome serum powder, and then automatically these cards are like cards that are useful in the deck. I don't have to guess with my hate. That's kind of what game three is for. Okay. Also, the fact that my opponent was willing to take those mulligans kind of tells me it's a force of will deck. So let's try and make sense of this hand. We have one black. We have two black. We're lacking one. Let's say I had a um, blue pact here. I think it would keep because that's why that's when the deck becomes like a, like the draw go situation um, is is useful if I just need to find another black source. So with that being said, this hand is uh, obviously terrible. My opponent's also on a mold of five. I now have turn one necrodominance. So I can put away Pact and Tendrils.
And now the question becomes, wow, this is too funny. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, that's too funny. Okay, so now it's the opponent's time to spin the wheel. I think I should already consider how to sideboard here. I don't have any power over what the opponent's doing now. How do I sideboard for the mirror? I think it's just mind break traps. So it's kind of... It's kind of weird. You, you can't keep a hand that doesn't try and win. Unless, I guess, I have, like, double mind break or whatever. Also, can that deck beat Veil of Summer? Maybe not. Maybe I need Veil of Summer as well. And what if my opponent has Veil of Summer? Should I have a couple of blue packs in the deck that I can draw into so I don't get veiled? This is nightmare nightmare fuel. Also because... Yeah, just so, so much random stuff that depends on your opener. But let's just say I had like Spirit Guide Veil here. Would I win? I'm I'm curious to see if I see any blue packs in my opponent's deck, and I and I don't think I will. There's also the the point about will the opponent have White Chancellor on the draw to try and bridge into their turn one? Ah, huh. this is uh, <laughs> this is a different kind of magic. That's for sure. Now the opponent just needs a Tindrels or Beseech. So I guess we don't get to see whether whether the opponent had the blue packed or not, but I would assume blue packed is terrible. Also, what if I pass a turn and Nature's Claim the Necro? That does all that also works. Ah, uh, am I a control deck or am I a combo deck? That's the question. I mean, I don't think I can leave home without these packs. So what does this deck do if I fizzle? If I already cast Summoner's Pack, I don't do anything. Um, so Chrome, Chrome, Serum Powder. This is how the deck was built originally, right? But what if I just... No, Na Nature's Claim is not it. I could see Veil. Oh, right, I have the negations. So, this one is easy, I feel like. Question is if I want to have more stuff. Act of Negation does next to nothing. Maybe I can just have Chancellor. Uh, that's also kind of bad. Maybe it's just Chromes to try and be faster. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so basically I submit some disruption, but I still focus on getting the job done early. Yeah. The 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 thing oh maybe I messed up. Maybe I was supposed to have a couple of blue packs. Um because um the I don't know if Mind Break Trap is industry standard. That's the other thing. Um, if Mind Break Trap is industry standard, it's 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 reasonable. I go land Dark Ritual Necro. That's not Mind uh, Mind Break Trappable. But then I want to draw into um, into that later. Okay, let's see.
I think I'm just going to go for it here. There, there's some... Let's say I already had a Veil or already had a Trap. There's a, there's a reason to draw less cards than 19. But I think here... That's not the name of the game. So... Let's go Spirit Guide. Um, Spirit Guide. Any rituals? Yeah, I just try and win here. Let's see what happens. My opponent packed um, the Born. Could be annoying. Let's see. I want to pick a black and a blue. Mm, let's cast Dark Red. So basically, I want to get to a spot where I can hard cast uh, Mind Break Trap against my opponent's Mind Break Trap, <clears throat> if that makes sense. Black, ton of black. Maybe I should just play all of those. No, I shouldn't, because I might want to put some of those back. Hmm, okay, so how do I finish this job the most efficiently? I think it's something to do with... Spirit Guide, Mana Morphose. Blue Red, maybe? So let's see, now I play that card. Mm, so let's see, what can I get rid of here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I guess. Uh, maybe another awakening is fine to put away here. Uh, let's try this. Any order. Draw a million cards. Here's Born. born Born Upon a Wind. So let's see. Like that. Like that. Like that. Play Born. Hold up. Heart cast. Mind Break Trap. Mm -hmm. So now I can play my stuff. I do anything smart here? Exile. How much mana do I have? Two in play. That's five. That's nine. And I get to 12. That's the. Mm, let's see. Play that. Imprint Born. I'm, I'm, right now, I'm trying to play around double Mind Break Trap. Marks. Black. Blue. Let's see. Do I have any green spirit guys left? Look at our exile here. One, two, three, four. I don't. So, with that being said, I think all I can do is just try and tundle my opponent here. So, like, this. And Drills of Agony. Target my opponent. Plenty of Storm. They have a trap. I can counter the first one.
They have double trap. I think I lose. Maybe I could have gotten to a spot where I had four more mana instead of just two. But I'm not sure. It looked like I had to kind of put more cards to the bottom and actually find my Born Upon a Wind. Here's Mind Break Trap. I will Mind Break Trap. There, Mind Break Trap. And then see if they have a second. I don't like this waiting. This is the opponent clicking on all of my copies with the second Mind Break Trap. That's what happens. Maybe I could have maybe I could have done more, but playing around second mind break trap versus not even winning in the first place, I think that would be I think that would be quite tough in that situation. But yeah, we got the job done here in the in the mirror, and uh I'm sure I didn't navigate this perfectly, but it, it was it was it was fun to try at least. Let's see if we can get a reactive matchup. Don't go anywhere. All right, I won the die roll here. I'm playing Necrodominance, and this is the definition of close. So I can go get Wild Cantor. I can't play that card. I have to mulligan here. This Chancellor's going to lose a lot of value if I, if I have to pass the turn. Yep, yeah, no, starting mana. This is a powder. Which card would I want in there? I bet it's born upon a wind. Uh, powder away three necros. <laughs> then I have to find my last one. But this hand is very bad. So yeah, let's try and find the last necro. Okay, so this is a keep. I can um, Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Besiege the Mirror for Necro. I can't beat a Force. And, uh... Yeah, that's just how it goes. Steve, Steve Lynx knows what's up here, pressing the mulligan button. There's some... hope in me that once the opponent sees the three Necrodominances in my exile already, <laughs> they might say, okay, this, this hand will do. But yeah, I'm looking to get away with murder here, basically. All right, let's see. Dark red. A ball red. Bargain away the land. Play my last copy of Necrodominance. Resolve. Um, let's draw 19. Let's check the hand. Uh, yeah. So, Exile Spirit Guide. Exile Spirit Guide. See here, Mana Morphos. For Blue Black. Dark Red. Dark Red. Born. Petal. And then I'll fire off a lethal tendrils. Seems seems fair to me. All right, nice exiling three necrodominances. Still 
winning turn one with ease. So maybe I used same logic as last time. I don't know what my opponent's playing, so I'm just going to add some cards that might help my strategy. And I still have the pact for a rainy day. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, this is... Uh, this should be fun in small doses, let me put it that way. I think this is one of those decks where when you're winning, it's like, whoa, this is absurd. This is cool. Let's keep playing it. But when you lose, I don't, I don't imagine you have much agency in those games, typically. Of course, you can mess up and maybe not optimize. Like in the last game, I, I feel like I could have, let's say I was a supercomputer. I could probably figure out some better amount of cards to put away with uh, Valakas Awakening with the intention of drawing into two more colorless mana sources so I could double, double trap. Also, I could have left in um, a couple of negations for that situation, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't consider it enough. So that 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 kind of stuff, you kind of have to enjoy that part of the game. The whole sideboarding, theory crafting, seeing different scenarios play out. But the the actual hands, I, I let's see if. if Maybe maybe I can be proven wrong and we get a couple of hands where it's like very close. Oh, should I keep this? Like the, the three necros going to exile was maybe a good example. But let's see if we can find like close close mulligan decisions. That would be that would be cool. Speaking of close mulligans mulligan decisions, this is not it. Um put that way. No necro. We do have Beseech here with how much mana? One, two, three. Okay, I can see this being a keep, and I put away the Morphos. Is that it? Yeah, maybe. So keep that, put away the Morphos. Hope to relatively fast have Beseech Negation back up. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Thought for a second. Okay, Trinisphere is not beatable, so we can move on with life. Okay, we're playing against red, which is a a deck where I feel like I should just win turn one and that's it. Uh, pack doesn't help. Might as well have Chancellors. Um. I have all the stuff. Yeah, I feel like I should just try and win turn one, period, here. I, I don't think there's any, let's have Nature's Claim, let's have Beseju. I, I don't think that's a good strategy. I think this is a good strategy, just trying to win. All right, next game. We're on the play versus Mono Red in game three. And uh, this hand is not keepable. Um, simply no black action, so to speak. This hand is keepable. This hand has black action. Um, so my only question here becomes, which card should I keep? I'm going to go Wild Cantor, Play Wild Cantor, Dark Ritual, Necrodominance. Maybe a Ball Ritual isn't very strong. Let's put Ball Ritual away. Done. Wild Cantor, Wild Cantor, Past Dark Ritual, Necrodominance. Drawing 19 cards. Let's see. Mm, looks like only one spirit got to me here, right? Oh, two spirit guides. Okay. Fair enough. So now I go act, spirit guide, exile spirit guide, exile spirit guide, cast mana morphos for blue black, ritual, ritual, born. 
And the game is over. Nice. Uh, can I do anything smart? I don't think so. I'll just cast some more, like, power some more rituals into it. And... Chrome imprint. Chancellor, I guess. Tendrils. All right, so <laughs> nice, nice matchups, nice matchups so far. This was just goldfishy. I killed my opponent. I got twenty sphered. I killed my opponent. Smooth sailing. Let's play one more. All right, let's play some more of this beautiful deck. Ah, this is uh, every time I see these hands, it's like swap any of these for uh, like uh, besiege or. Or a necro, and this is just unbeatable. But that's not the case. We have to mulligan. We have to mulligan once more. No gasolina here. The less we, the more we mulligan, the more uh, reliant we become on actual dark ritual necro, and not just you know playing around and going beseech. It's it's just gonna be harder for each mulligan. Yeah, this is just not just not keepable. I think I might have to keep this on a mold of four. So what do I do here? I keep Necro. Maybe I keep these four. I don't think mulling it into three makes sense, but maybe it does. Land Ritual Necro. Maybe it does. Let me know if I misplayed by keeping this four. I'm actually quite curious. Is there any legacy deck where I can pass the turn twice and still be in it? And I even still have to get lucky, right? So that's a good start. And I'm one mana off. I play out the land because while I give away info, I also, if I draw another land, a uh, vault or gemstone mine, then yeah, I'm in business. So my opponent's start isn't scary. Like, this is more or less the dream scenario of a legacy deck having two turns and doing this because that deck is so contextual. Nice serum powder. Hmm. The question is, can I pass a turn one more time? I think I'm going to pass the turn one more time, and then I'm going to go Desperado on the Mana Morphos. Um, I'm trying to think what the opponent could, could possibly do this turn, and it's like, play Fable, play Painter. I mean, my opponent's going to name Blue and hold up a Blast, but, but I have a Pact, so I think this is, this is a good play. I don't know. I have to hit a Ritual or a Land. I don't think it's that bad. Or a pedal. Uh, yes. Spirit guide. Cast mana morphos. Go double black. Since I already invested a spirit guide, it would make sense for the opponent to do something here. Wow. Okay. Nice land. Nice pedal. Okay. Necrodominance. Actor Blast. No. And also, no attack from Welder. We like that. We like to see that. And I can't die a lightning bolt. My opponent probably has a lightning bolt. So let's see. It's a bit confusing to look at these cards when you know they have another when they have another color. Um so let's see. Uh 
Let's cast Act. Here comes the bolt. Here comes my pact. Yes, please. Here comes another spirit guide. Exile spirit guide. Yes, metamorphose. Go blue, black. Ritual. 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 Born. And. Kill my opponent. Nice. Mulligan to four. Do nothing. Drill my opponent. Okay. <laughs> against Painter. What can Painter do? Hmm. The Chancellor is not that great. Am I really just adding my own consistency cards and trying to go to town? Is that how you play Magic? And then I kind of hedge against, uh, like, Bolts, Arrow, like, uh, yeah, Arrow Blast with four packs. Because a normal, normal situation would be the opponent goes Red Source Pass, hold up Red Blast. Then I go Necrodominance, draw Gassillion, my opponent tries to deal with Born. then I just have the pack as I play four copies. I think that would be somewhat normal. All righty. So the third time in a row we play against a non-Force of Will deck, which I imagine will power the win rate through the roof. The, the thing is, one of them was a mirror match, so that's like a coin toss. Um, and I would imagine Red Prison is, is able to find a turn one lock piece as often as I find a turn one kill, which basically means that matchup is also die roll dependent, except game one where my opponent does not know what's going on, so they might go, you know, Blood Moon that doesn't matter, um, what else would that be? Like Hearst that doesn't matter, turn one Rebel Master or something, like because of the information. Okay, so let's see. This could be a bit tricky. Maybe I can play turn one Beseech. So Chrome imprinting Mana Morphos. That's one mana, two mana, three mana. So I'd have to draw mana source number four. Let's see. Imprint like that. Black, black. This one. And then I need one more mana source to go for it on two draws. Okay, I can, I can keep this. I'm curious what the opponent can do here. The opponent can play a Wilder turn one. So I need a mana source here or the next draw, and I should be golden. Okay, that card is very strong. Um, yeah. So let's see. Chrome Mox Imprint Spirit Guide. I believe. No, Imprint Mana Morphos. I thought I was about to mess up there. Um, so let's see. Am I doing this correct? I think I am. So black, and I keep the mana morphos in hand because it's going to be good for later. I think this is correct. Ball. Beseech the mirror. Necrodominance. Draw 19, well knowing that I'm losing to, if I don't draw a pact, yada yada, all of that jazz. So let's see, green, green, 
I didn't find any rituals this time, I believe. Only one Cabal ritual. Hmm. So... Did I find Born upon him? Yeah, I did find Born. Um, how much mana do I have? Also, the pedal is a mana source. Maybe I just play this out now. Blue black seems like what I'm supposed to do here. Blue black. So I can go find one more spirit guide, which is the last one. Exile. Born. Play Petal. Exile Spirit Guide. Play Cabal. And then Tendrils. Okay. Let's see. And that'll do it. Ooh, this actually... Oh, I had another Petal. Yeah, okay, I didn't check my cantrip. Yeah, this is just kind of absurd against non-blue decks. And uh, just this deck existing sh should, in my opinion, impact, um, you know, players to, you know, play blue, play traps, play, like, play interactive stuff. The thing, about, the thing about it is sometimes you just go land, dark ritual, uh, necro, and then mind break trap is not a factor because I'm going to draw into this pack the mitigation with so high likelihood. All right, that puts me at three and zero. Oh. Uh, I'm like a bull in a china shop, but this can get definitely get the job done against uh, helpless opponents. So let's see if we can uh, keep it rolling here. All right, round four. I'm currently undefeated with uh, Necrodominance. Let's hope my opponent keeps signing up with, you know, modern decks without force of will. Uh, yeah. Let's put this back with powder. Oh, I forgot. I just exiled my tendrils. Then what did the deck do? That's so funny. How can I win without the tendrils? <laughs> okay, so I'm supposed to keep that hand because I have tendrils in it. Let's take a look at that hand again. Okay. I mean... Let's just get knowledge about what our opponent's playing, and then... We can move on with life here. That's actually a kind of cool fail rate. I didn't think about that. But that's good to uncover. No covered island. That's actually pretty good to uncover, because that is one of the fail rates. You don't find a Born Upon a Wind post-Necro. That's one. You ha have a terrible hand with Powder and Tendrils. Oh, I should... Ah, now I see. I should have taken a normal mulligan. Magic, very hard game. Magic, very hard game. Okay, so... You kind of have Force Mulligan if, if, if that's the case. Good, good thing we're learning. That's kind of the cool thing about just playing new cards. You always learn something. You can add that to the, the repertoire. Then when you play against it, all of that stuff is just important. Okay, so Baron. Okay, so it looks like my opponent's on some kind of Esper Vile stuff. Enter the battlefield, return up to one creature or planeswalker, and if you uh, you draw a card. Okay, so my opponent. <coughs> oh, sorry, guys. My opponent's on some blue deck that we need to address. <laughs> so I, I want this. Question is, if I just cut a. Outer, and I hope for the best. How do you feel about that? Maybe I cut an awakening. 
Okay, I'm ready. There's also maybe like this, maybe. Okay, I'll try double veil and go a little bit down on the consistency post on Necro here. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Why not just protect my Necro and, and be willing to play Drago? Even though Drago is generally bad for this deck, but sometimes you can keep the hands where, oh, I, all I need is like one mana sorcerer. If I have like double disruption, then maybe I can keep a hand that needs two mana sources. And I still have the Chancellor, so I'll just easily go for it turn one if I, if I have a Chancellor and a Necro. I think if you if you can ask that question, you know, having four packs for chancellors and the means to ki send a necro, then you can power through like your opponent's average hand, which is like one force after sideboard, right? And that's why the deck has legs because my good draws can actually power through the opponent's um, average draws, where other combo decks need to either prey, um, prey on lack of information from the opponent's side of the table, or you drawing a bit out of the ordinary um, and maybe still still lose. So that's kind of the thing about this deck when you think about it. My, my great hand is this like Necro with the Pactor Chancellor, and the opponent's great hand is double force, and we lose in that situation, right? So that's one way to look at it. How does our respective Great hands line up. And I think the average for this deck is just presenting a Necro turn one with no backup. And if the opponent's average is somewhere between no force and force, all of a sudden, lots of variance there. Then, of course, my opponent having knowledge about the matchup, they're going to go to six way more willingly. I remember I played against this deck for maybe the first or second time the other day. And I kept the non-force hand with Delver and just got smoked. It's kind of cool to then reflect on that and then try and play it from the other perspective, right? To get a good grip of how consistent is the deck actually. That's why I like to play different decks on the channel. I might, I might not be a breakfast expert or a necrodominance expert, but all of that helps me be a legacy expert. Like, playing around with those different decks, I mean. Um, okay, so this hand is unplayable. We have double Chancellor, bunch of crap. Let's press the mulligan button. Also, I missed my opponent Yorion last game. And I know why. Because it was on my second monitor. That's so funny. Um, yeah, this hand doesn't do anything. Let's outer and keep born in the deck. What does this do? This shows a Chancellor. This has two mana, and then I can mana Morphos. Is that really how I want to go out? I think so. I think this is how I'm supposed to play. Because if I pass the turn, all of a sudden my opponent has Force of Will up. So basically, I'm putting my whole tournament on the line here. Black, blacks. So I need to draw land, pedal, ritual. Yeah, it's probably like 25% or something. I don't like it, but I think it has to be done. Exile Spirit Guide. Play Pedal. Mana Morphers into Double Black. If I hit, the video goes on. If I don't hit, the video stops. Okay, that was sick. That was uh, that was super sick. So let's not get double forced, I guess. This is uh, this is too awesome. All right, we got double forced here out of the tournament, which is. Ah, uh, that, that, that was too awesome. That last turn was too awesome. B break, banking on my mana for Morphos to find a black source. Get there. 
put on the shades and still get double forced. Ah, that's too much. I feel like what the opponent's supposed to do there, once I invest Pact, which means I lose next turn, and I crack Pedal, and I exile Ellie, um, whatever it's called, Spirit Guide, then I think it's time to force this card. Um, there is a world where I already have Necro, and I have Gemstone, and I can trip into Pact of Negation in that spot. And I already invested two mana. What am I going to do with... I guess I had three remaining cards, so there is a world where this could be bait. And then I go, okay, land ritual necrodominance. I don't know. It, it we lose to double force. Um, we beat one force. I'm happy about that. All right, this 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 video was was super awesome, especially the roller coaster in the end. So to the surprise of no one, this deck is favored against none blue. It does have some fail rate, some different ones, some different um like corner case scenarios and all of those corner case scenarios kind of add up to, you know, some kind of inconsistency. So if the opponent, if the field is playing like a bunch of forces, I'm not too confident about the deck, but if, if the enough of the meta is, you know, trying to beat other blue decks by going big with something like cloud post or painter or something like that, then all of a sudden you have enough goldfish matchups that this deck can actually, can actually do work. Uh, I'm curious to, to to watch the deck moving forward, and uh, I hope you had a fun time today. I, I sure did. It was uh, a cool breath of fresh air, winning on my own end step, and uh, yeah, getting double forced in the end, which is kind of how most movies go. The bad guy, bad guy died in the end. So uh, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you back here tomorrow. Bye, guys.